Okay, homework section 2.2, functions and graphs. Before I get into the actual homework, I'm going to talk about what a function is. A function is simply a relation in which each element of the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. So let's look at what an example of a function looks like and what an example of not a function look like, looks like. Okay, this first example here. To be a function, each one of these elements can only go to one element in the range. So if you'll notice, the three only goes to two, the four only goes to one, negative seven only goes to zero, and six only goes to five. There is not any elements in the domain that go to multiple numbers in the range. So that's, yes, why that is a function. Okay, to make that more clear, let's look at what makes an example of not a function. Look at the four in the domain. Look where the four goes. It goes to the one, and it also goes to the zero. That is why this relationship is not a function, because the four goes to more numbers in the range than just exactly one. So that's why that is not a function. Now, Let's look at some of these homework problems. On number one, you'll see how to make it clearer for you. All right, on number one, you'll see that the three only goes to the 15. That's my scribble there. Number the 22 only goes to 19. The 16 only goes to 15. So you'll notice that each one of these elements of the domain only goes to one element in the range. What I was trying to do here is show what would make it not a function was if this three had another arrow coming out of it going also to the 19. That's what it would have made that not a function. So that's why this correspondence is a function. Same thing on number two. Okay, let's, here's our relationship. Look at the elements in the domain. The negative one only goes to one. The three only goes to one. The nine also only goes to one, which means each element in the domain only corresponds to exactly one element in the range. They all correspond to the same element in the range, but it doesn't matter, the negative one doesn't go to any more numbers than one, and neither does three or nine. So that's why it's A, yes, because each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. All right, number three, determine whether this one is a function. Well, if you'll notice, once again, each element in the domain only goes to one element in the range. So it is a function. Now, the last one like this, if you'll notice, this is going to be listed as your domain. Atlanta goes to the Hawks, the Braves, and the Falcons. Same thing with New York. It goes to the Rangers, the Jets, and the Yankees, which means these two elements in the domain go to multiple elements in the range, which is why this correspondence is not a function. Now, when you get into number five, it's gonna start giving you different functions that you're going to plug into. For instance, on number five, given this function described by h of x equals x plus eight, find each of the following. If you'll notice, the first thing it wants you to find is h of zero. Well, all that it wants you to do for each one of these problems is to go to the original function and replace this x with whatever is in these parentheses, which means on the first one, I'm going to replace the x in this function with a 0. So that is this work shown here. I would have 0 plus 8, which just equals 8. The second one, again, starting all over, I go to the function and replace the x in the function with the number in parentheses. So you'll see I've drawn that out here negative 14 plus 8, which gives me negative 6. You'll do the same thing with the negative 15 and the 13. 
Now, I'll work this one out for you also since it was a little different. It's the same exact process. You're going to still go to the function and replace the x in the function with what is in parentheses. This time, it's the y plus 14 in parentheses. So that's what I replace the x with. Bring down the plus 8 of the function. And then you can combine the 14 and the 8 to get the y plus 22. All right, number six, same thing. I have a new function. My function is 9y plus 5. So again, I'm just going to be replacing this y of the function with whatever is in parentheses. So you'll notice each one of them is going to have the 9, then replace the y plus 5. So the first one I'm replacing with 10. So I'll have 9 times 10 plus 5. So 9 times 10 gives me the 90, plus 5, which gives me 95. Same thing on the second part. I'm replacing this time the y with the negative 10. So I'll have 9 times negative 10 plus 5, which gives me negative 90 plus 5, or negative 85. Now, the last one I went ahead and worked out just since it was a decimal, but again, just plug it in your calculator. You'll have 9 times 6.7 plus 5. In my calculator, 9 times 6.7 gives me 60.3 plus 5, which gives me 65.3. All right, number 7. Now, this function is an absolute value function, which means I'm replacing this x, again, with whatever is in the parentheses. So the first number that's in the parentheses is a 3. So I'll put the 3 in place of the x. So I have the absolute value of 3 minus 4. Well, absolute value just simply means how many spaces away from 0 is the number inside. Well, 3 is 3 spaces away from 0, which means the absolute value of 3 is just 3. Bring over the minus 4, and 3 minus 4 gives me negative 1. I'll do the same thing with the 4. Now, the a plus 4 means I replace the x inside the absolute value with a plus 4 and then bring down the minus 4. This one simply cannot be simplified since I do not know what the a is. So I cannot simplify what the absolute value of a plus 4 is. So that one is ex that's as simplified as that one can go. That's what you enter in as your answer into the my labs. All right, number 8. Again, same situation. I'm replacing, my function is x cubed. So I'm simply replacing the x with each one of these numbers. I will work a couple out for you. The first one, let's see if I replace the x with a zero, I'll have zero to the third power, which is just zero. If I replace the x with negative one, I have negative one, to the third power. Well, negative 1 to the third power just means negative 1 times itself three times, which just ends up being negative 1. The 2. If I replace the 2, or replace the x with the 2, I'll have 2 to the third power, which means 2 times itself three times, or in other words, 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Okay, let's go down to this last one. Replacing the x with negative 4a. So I'll have negative 4a to the third power, which just means negative 4a times itself three times. Well, negative 4 times itself three times is negative 64. And a to the third power is just simply a to the third power. So you would just have negative 64 a to the third power. All right, number nine says the function described by f of c equals 9 fifths c plus 32 gives the Fahrenheit temperature corresponding to the Celsius temperature. Find the Fahrenheit temperature equivalent to negative Five degrees Celsius. So I am simply going to replace the Celsius number here with negative 5. So in other words, I am finding F of 
negative 5 in this function. So I will have 9 fifths times negative 5. Again, I'm just replacing the Celsius with the negative 5 plus 32. When I do this math, 9 times negative 9 fifths times negative 5 just gives me negative 9 plus 32. So negative 9 plus 32 gives me 23. So negative 5 degrees Celsius corresponds to 23 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Next page, number 10, graph the function. Again, on these, it's giving me half the chart. It wants me to go and graph this function. So just like in 2.1, I'm gonna go to y equals and clear it out and type in exactly what the y equals, which is in this case is negative 4x plus two. So negative 4x plus two. Now, let's graph it just to see what we're graphing. It looks like we're graphing a straight line, a linear function. Now, let's go to, again, second table. So, and it gives me the x-coordinates that it wants me to show. So, it wants me to show what goes with the negative 2. Well, I just happen to be on it. Negative 2 corresponds to the 10. So, you'll have the 10. What does the x being 0 correspond to? Well, that's this one, so that'll be at 0, 2. And then the last one, it wants me to know what does the x being 2 corresponds to, which in this case is negative 6. So once you've done that, it's going to want you to graph this function. Now remember, you're going to need to go to the bottom of the graph once you enlarge it and click on the line function, the line tool to tell it that you're about to graph a line so it'll know how to connect the points. So the first point I'm going to plot is this negative 2, 10, which means to go to the left 2 and then up 10. So you would put the point left 2 up 10, so right there. Now, remember, when you're moving your mouse around on your graph on my labs, if you'll notice at the bottom part, since these, these graphs are so compact, you'll notice that wherever your cursor is, you'll be able to see that here. So you just want to move it until it says negative 2, 10. The next point is at 0, 2. So z left and right 0, since the x coordinate is 0, up 2. Now again, since it is a straight line, once you plot that second point, my labs is going to automatically connect the two points for you. You won't need to plot the third point. All right, number 11. Go back to y equals, clear it out. I am doing y equals negative 5. Plus, now remember to type in absolute value, you're going to go to the math button, over to number, and then the first one under number is absolute value. So once you hit that, it'll give you your absolute value bar and then put the X inside it. So let's look at what that's going to look like. That's going to be that V shape, the absolute value shape, the V shape. So now you'll need to complete this chart. So go to second table and let's see what it wants me to do it wants me to do where the x is negative 2 again i'm already on it so the negative 2 goes with negative 3 for y negative 1 goes with negative 4 0 oops 0 goes with negative 5 1 goes with negative 4, and 2 goes with negative 3. Now remember, the absolute value shape is the one where it wants you to plot the vertex first, which is the point where the V changes directions. So let's look <clears throat> at where this V changes directions. And you can tell it's where these numbers start go mirroring themselves. So if you look at the graph, it's at this point right here where the x is 0. So it's going to be at this point, that 0, negative 5. So that's going to be the first point that you'll plot. 
that zero, negative five, and then any of these other points will be fine after that. Negative two, negative three, so left two, down three, negative one, negative four, so left one, down four, there's the zero, negative five, then one, negative four, so right one, down four this time, and again, once you have plotted enough points, Math Lab will draw the graph for you. All right, number 12, same thing. This time it's going to give me an x squared graph. So let's go back to our y equals and type in what it wants me to type in here. So x, and you can come straight down here to the squared button, minus 4x minus 2. So let's look at this graph. It's that parabola shape, so make sure before you graph that you choose the parabola tool in my labs. So let's complete our chart. Second table. Let's see, it wants me to start off where the x is 0. So come down to where x is 0. It corresponds to y being negative 2. Where x is 1, y is negative 5. Where x is 2, y is negative 6. Where x is 3, y is negative 5. And 4, negative 2. So there's your chart. Let's plot some of these points. The first point is at 0, negative 2. So I don't go left or right at all since my x coordinate is 0. I'll go down 2 for the y. The next point is at 1, negative 5. Five, which means to the right one, down five, two, negative six, so to the right two, down six this time, and then look what happens when x is three, three, negative five, so to the right three, and down five. So you'll notice it's made its turn. It's U-shaped turn. Again, once you plot enough points into my labs, it will draw the graph for you. The last three problems, or the next two problems, are the same thing. So for sake of time, I'm not going to work these. These, again, this will be an X-squared graph. So you'll choose the parabola or the U-shaped function and complete the chart. Number 14 is going to be the cubic function. So you'll notice when you put this in your y equals, it's going to make that squiggle cubic shape, and that's the tool that you're going to use after you fill out your chart from your table on your calculator. Now, 15. Once we get to 15 and through the end of the homework section, it's going to give us the picture of a graph. And it's going to ask us by looking at the graph to determine whether or not it is a function, which means you can use what is called the vertical line test. What the vertical line test says is if you draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph and it only touches the shape one time, then it is a function. So if you'll notice, each of these vertical lines, it doesn't ever touch the graph more than once, which means, yes, it is a function because it passes the vertical line test, again, which just says, if you draw a vertical line through your graph and it only touches it once, it is a function. This will make it more clear on number 16. Look at this shape. It's this oval shape. Well, what happens if I draw a vertical line right here? It touches it once, twice. If it touches it more than once, it is not a function. So this one, 17, again, if I draw a vertical line right here, it touches it once and twice, so it touches it more than once, so not a function. And the last one, okay, even though this looks more complicated, any time you draw a vertical line, you cannot draw a vertical line anywhere on that graph, 
and actually touch it more than once. I'm only touching it once each time, which means, again, yes, this one is a function since it passes the vertical line test.